Epic Mega Games was mostly known at the time during the shareware scene, with games like Jazz Jackrabbit, Jill of the Jungle, Tyrion, One Must Fall 2097, and various others. They were great hits during the DOS era, but in the year 1998, Epic would soon release a masterpiece. And that masterpiece would be unreal. Released on May 22, 1998 in collaboration with Digital Extremes, it was considered one of the last games released under the Mega Games name because when the release of Unreal put them on the map, they were no longer looked at as just some dudes pretending to be a bigger company and so they decided to shorten their name to Epic Games. It took four years of development, and while originally releasing as a rather buggy game till the patches came in, the game would still be praised for its self-titled Unreal Engine and how unique it was. Keep in mind that we went from a chunky software rendering experience to a smooth 3D accelerated experience a year or two after Quake had come out. It tells you that 3D graphics was evolving fast during that time. It was often pushed as a Quake killer alongside other upcoming titles during 1996 and 1997. And looking at the pre-release versions of Unreal, you could see why people were hyped up. Despite id Software coming out with Quake 2 at the near end of 1997, it didn't stop Epic from stomping Quake 2 to the dust. So much that even critics at the time called Unreal the best looking game of all time in the future of gaming. One would even say, rest in peace Quake 2. I always found Unreal to be a better single player game than Quake 2 was in my opinion. Now don't get me wrong, Quake 2 is a good game in its own right. Especially with the game engine that is id Tech 2, the music from Sonic Mayhem, and its multiplayer. But the single player just doesn't click well compared to its first game, which has tons of user add-ons to this day. Anyway, Unreal even planned to have ports for the Apple Macintosh, the Sony PlayStation, and the Nintendo 64 DD. While the Macintosh version by Westlake Interactive would be released about a year later after its initial release, the console ports wouldn't see the light of day as the Nintendo 64 DD wasn't successful in, in the US. And the PlayStation version by Pterodactyl Software was canned by Infogrames. Luckily, a rework project is around thanks to some of the people from the Unreal community. Also, if you're one of those people who bought a new video card during the late 90s, you likely might have obtained a copy of Unreal as well. This is known as Unreal Special Edition, an OEM shareware demo of Unreal that has about a quarter of the base game going up to the Dark Arena level and even has a few exclusive deathmatch levels. Unreal also went through several patches up until July 2000 with the 226F patch. If you're on an older PC from its time, 225F is recommended for 3D effects, while 226B is recommended for DirectX and OpenGL. You could also use 224V, which is a basic patch, and the most far as you can go in terms of multiplayer nowadays. If you are curious, however, then play the unpatched version or up to version 219. For modern hardware, I would recommend grabbing Unreal Gold and the version 227J patch from the old Unreal website. Or if you want to use the original version, then use DG Voodoo 2. Unreal also had one expansion pack in the form of Unreal Mission Pack 1, Return to Nepali. And it was combined with the base game with the release of Unreal Gold in January 2000. There was originally more in the works, but didn't see the light of day but a few have been recovered by the community. When the game originally came out, these were how the weapons sounded like. The last version of Unreal to feature these sounds was version 219, because by version 220 new sounds were introduced.
Since I've seen most people play with the new sounds, especially with Unreal Gold, I'm going to keep this old school and use version 2.19 for this video. The game starts off with you waking up in a prison cell. Okay, so basically the lore is interesting. You portray as a silent protagonist, Prisoner 849, and the prison ship known as the Vortex Rikers was en route to a prison moon, only to crash land into a planet known as Napali. Once a planet where an alien race known as the Nali were in peace before a reptilian race known as the Scar conquered the planet and enslaved the Nali to mine Teridium. Which was used to make weapons or other powerful things. You can also find more interesting lore using the translator we picked up from the Vortex Rikers. Now it is your goal to escape the planet while killing some Scar and saving Nollies that give you rewards in return. On top of that, you will also come across the Mercenaries from the Terranox, a ship that also crash landed on the planet to be used as a garden by the Scar, and the Crawl who were also enslaved by the Scar to be used as soldiers. Starting the game also allows you to choose what your protagonist would look like. With a set of player models and skins, you could have it a bald dude, a redhead, or even a scar. What made Unreal's gameplay unique at the time was its arsenal of weapons. At first, you start off with the Dispersion Pistol, a rechargeable pew pew gun that is mostly useful for conserving ammo and shooting crates. But it can be upgraded as the game progresses. It's also worth noting that if you're using an older version of Unreal, once you fully upgrade your dispersion pistol and combine that with an amplifier that boosts your damage four times, you can delete a lot of enemies, including bosses. After that is when the weaponry gets more interesting the further you play through the game. Here you have an auto mag that can shoot faster at a cost for accuracy. A stinger that acts like a projectile machine gun or nail gun at first, but can also become a projectile shotgun. The ASMD shock rifle that shoots beams of plasma but allows tons of damage when performing what is called a shock combo. The 8-ball launcher is both a rocket and a grenade launcher that can shoot up to 6 and can even shoot homing rockets if aimed for long enough. Well, in fact, this weapon is very satisfying to use that even there's a deathmatch map called Morbius, but more on that later. The Unreal franchise is also well known for this legendary weapon, the Flak Cannon. Epic's equivalent of a shotgun that shoots out flak shards while the alternative fire launches out a flak shell that detonates on impact. The razor jack shoots blades that decapitates heads, but can hover around based on where you look at. The GES bio rifle shoots green blobs that stick into walls that deal some splash damage, and also lets you charge a bigger blob. A sniper rifle that also decapitates heads, and the minigun that has two tri-barrels that spin with each other. It's also worth noting that the enemies tend to dodge your attacks a lot. This is because Epic hired Steven Polge to work on the game's AI. Polge also well known for making one of the first deathmatch bots for Quake called Reaperbot. Now the enemy variety does become a little bit lacking the further you play through the game, but aside from that, facing a Scar Warrior for the first time in the mines and fighting a Titan in the arena really is a memorable experience. I also find it interesting that you have some Scar soldiers picking up some weapons you use as well, so it also feels like deathmatch in such a strange way. Especially knowing full well that the AI is made by somebody who made a deathmatch bot for Quake. Aside from the gunplay, what also made Unreal an interesting experience is the environment and level design. Epic did a wonderful job on that department. Like look at these waterfalls, skies and sky town, the sheer darkness of the source, where you fight the Scar Queen. The levels were even designed for exploration in mind as it rewards you with goodies. 
Even the fun fact is that when I was little, I would always no clip into Skytown to look around the buildings and enjoy watching the crawl play dice. I would even spawn a massive amount of monsters bumping into each other to cause infights. The icing on the cake, though, also comes in the form of the game's soundtrack. Composed by Alexander Brandon, Mikkel Vindenboss, Andrew Sega, and Dan Gardope. Some of the tracks has a more ambient side, while some would also have a more action-packed side. There are some tracks. The soundtrack I always loved listening to from time to time. In fact, this game is one of the reasons why I adore tracker module music, and it has me looking for more of that kind of music since then. While the ambient tracks fit really well with the atmosphere, the action-packed side of the soundtrack never fails to hit hard. The ending theme also gives me the feels. It's like that adventurous feeling of a prisoner in a prison ship now having to explore an unknown planet, going to places you've never been before while fighting the Scar. I mean, hey, I find that more worth it than working at a prison moon any day. Unreal can also be a pretty long game to finish, but can be worth a playthrough if you have the time and patience. However, do expect to get lost in some levels on your first or second playthrough. Like the Sunspire, for instance. I hated this map at first because I tend to get lost and run out of flares and flashlights. But by the time I did my second and third playthrough, I grew to like the level. That's one of the things I've learned is that the more you revisit an old classic and the more you learn the game and its levels, the better the experience becomes. That aside, the transitioning from level to level is interesting. It can go from the spaceships like Vortex Rikers and the Scar Mothership, to outdoor environments like the Nolly Castle and Bluff Ever Smoking, to even somewhere in the sky like Napali Haven. It is really a journey that I recommend playing through one of these days. Now, as fun as the single player was, what about multiplayer? Well, the thing is, when it first came out, the network code wasn't the very best. And do keep in mind that people were on dial-up connections at the time. It may be a bit different now that high-speed internet is affordable, but back then, in order for people to enjoy your game would be to optimize the network code. And that Epic did with patches. Despite the network code troubles, Unreal's multiplayer was so good that Epic's next Unreal game would focus mostly on multiplayer. Unreal's multiplayer has a few interesting game types. Aside from your standard cooperative and deathmatch modes, there was also Dark Match which is basically deathmatch, but everyone had flashlights and the map was dark. Which is in the name. There was also King of the Hill, but it feels more like a Your It style gameplay, where the It is granted extra damage, of course. There was also a game type called Kill the Cow, and it was said to be some form of Capture the Flag, but the mode did not make it to the final game. Unreal also had a set of deathmatch maps, while Darkmatch only had one. The most famous deathmatch map also being Deck 16, but here are some honorable mentions like Ariza, Tundra, and Curse. 
Now, when you have a good set of friends around, then Unreal makes a fun co-op and deathmatch experience. Boyd, what the <laughs> fuck? Boyd! <laughs> Boyd, you dick! Fuck He's you! The... I'm, I'm, I'm real suing. experience. Boyd, that was awesome. <laughs> 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 Karma, bitch. Uh -oh. Sadly, Unreal isn't as popular nowadays compared to its later game Unreal Tournament in terms of multiplayer, because Unreal Tournament pretty much refined Unreal's multiplayer formula. But if you want to experience Unreal Multiplayer, I do recommend joining a Discord community that holds events. Now, speaking of co-op, it is best to use a mod like J Co-op Z or similar. This is because the official co-op can be a pain given how some of the levels were not made for co-op in mind. Like, you could lose weapons and items when dying, and even some levels lack a good amount of items and weapons to recover from that. Not to mention that some of the levels like the ones that make use of a boat to transport, and if you were to die, you would have to go back to the very start, forcing you to slowly swim to the destination. However, it was fun at first, but by the time we went to Bluff Eversmoking is when it starts to become a slog. Now, if you don't have any friends, or you just want to simulate that multiplayer feel, then there's also Bot Match, which is serviceable. You can even customize the bots to your liking as well, so go ahead and do some team death matches with your friends' names on it or something. Unreal also comes bundled with its own level editor, named Unreal Editor, or Unreal Ed for short, allowing you to create your own levels and scripts using Unreal Script. There is even one mod that is basically a recreation of Unreal Circa late 1997. Not only gameplay and expansion add-ons were made, but users would craft some quality of life mod for multiplayer like Enhanced Deathmatch. It is also worth noting that other developers wanted the piece of the pie with Epic's Unreal Engine, so with the power of licensing, it gave us some games you may be familiar of, like Deus Ex, Rune, and even Duke Nukem Forever, which uses a heavily modified Unreal Engine. So where do you get this game nowadays? Well, here's the thing, you could get the games on Steam and good old games, but for whatever reason, Epic delisted them in the near end of 2022 which angered a lot of Unreal fans, including me. So the only possible way to obtain the games is from a rather familiar source. It's a damn shame that Epic would treat such a masterpiece this way. A masterpiece that helped put them on the map and made them what they are today. I bet that in 20 to 30 plus years, the other cash cow, Fortnite, would get the same treatment once it's no longer useful in their eyes. And how hard is it to open source the original Unreal Engine? Like seriously. It's nice enough that the 227 patch is still around to this day, but I would personally would have loved to see what people could do with the source code. Like people could even port it to some consoles like the original Xbox as a homebrew. But anyway, that's about wraps up this video. What are your thoughts and stories with this game, and what are your experiences? I would like to hear them in the comment section. Also, do expect the next Unreal video in the future, where we cover one of Unreal's only mission pack. Until next time, peace out.